It is really the physics that makes the beauty of, of skating, you know, possible. I do sometimes call figure skating, it's a, it's a physics sport because yeah. trying to figure out how to, how to get a kid, how to get a skater, how to, how to get yourself through a, a double lutz, yeah. how, you know, how to make it work. I and mean, that's so much of your challenge is figuring out, figuring out how to make the physics work for you. So you have to find ways with all of these, these cons physics applications in yeah. skating to put them in terms that a skater can visualize and implement in the moment. One of my coaches had always said that, you know, some of the things that about skating that are kind of the magic of skating, you know, are is that ability to sort of, you know, lean and sort of defy gravity. One of the things that people almost expect from physics classes is that their professor is going to have tons of demos, invite students down into the front of the room. I did it just yesterday, I'm gonna do it again. In lecture today, invite someone down, have them do something. Ice skating is a fantastic example for physics. It combines many physical laws um, in a rather elegant way. Um, no single physical law is more important than the others. They all just describe different aspects of what it is that you picture when you're picturing ice skating. The ice skate and the ice combination is actually a really elegant solution um, that, that um, exploits physics. So when the ice skate is flat on the ice like this and, and the flat surface is in contact, you have a very low friction surface. You just glide along icily. The interesting thing happens is when you take that skate and you kind of tip it a little bit, you're now digging the sharp edge of the skate down into the ice. And that gives you the option of having friction which it turns out you need because this law of inertia applies for when um, there's no forces acting on an object. You're just gonna continue moving. But if you wanna change the state of that motion, you do have to apply a force on the object. Blade usage is something that, come, that needs to come out of your mouth in every lesson. Where's the weight on the blade? If you're in the wrong part of the blade and trying to do a turn, it isn't gonna work. You know, and that blade's gonna catch and you're gonna go down or it's just not gonna go. So, um, yeah, so sometimes, you know, you know, whether it's a beginner skater or even an advanced skater, you know, you know, blade usage is something that if you're a coach, you know, some discussion of that should be coming out of your mouth. You're always trying to balance how much force do I have to create to get to the speed I need to overcome the friction. You push on the ice, the ice is going to push you. So when you dig that skate down into the ice, you're actually pushing the ice and the earth that way in order to propel yourself this way. So it's all three of these Newton's laws of motion together. And you can kind of decide whether you want friction by having the, the corner of the skate dig in. That's when you like press off of the ice or when you turn, you're going around a circle, the skate is going to be sort of crooked. So you can dig that edge in. So you can kind of push off of the ice. While they're spinning, you know, the goal there is to have as little friction as possible because you can spin as th the, the fast as possible and you can spin the longest. Mm -hmm. If you're not letting your toe pick kind of hit the ice because that'll drag and create more friction, you know, or, you know, if you're, if you're rocking back and forth, you end up having more blade on the ice, less, more blade on the ice. One of the most popular tricks in ice skating, I don't know the, the, the name of it. I, I think I refer to it as like the tippy toe twirly do. I don't, I don't know what it's called, but it's where the ice skater will be on the, the tip of their, their figure skate and they'll be spinning. And so they'll sort of approach this and they'll sort of kick, like they kick off the ice and they'll set themselves into a rotation. And then what they'll do is they'll start, you'll notice they'll have like their arms out, maybe they have their big heavy skate way out to the side and they're spinning kind of slow. And then over time, they'll bring their arms in, they'll bring their leg in. And what they're doing is as they're bringing their mass inward, their rotation rate is going to go up. They're going to start rotating faster, 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 faster. And so it's tempting to think that they're like somehow kicking off of the ice to speed themselves up, but that's not at all the case. Everything in figure skating has some element of rotation to it. So, you know, the way we put um, rotational inertia um, and that conservation of momentum um, and moment of inertia, the way we, the way we put that into like layman's terms for figure skater is, is, is really this really basic idea is we say big shapes, turn slowly, small shapes turn faster. And so, because they can understand that, they can feel that, they, even a beginner will kind of have some experience with that. As you go from a large shape 
to a small shape, um, the rate of acceleration is related to how quickly you change those positions. And so the only way to accelerate a spin is to, is to change the big shape to the small shape faster than friction is working against you. This is a, a, a physics concept called angular momentum. It's one of these lovely um, things in the universe where as far as we can tell, it's never created or destroyed. So what they're doing is when they approach, they kick off that ice and they're giving themselves some angular momentum to rotate. And then as they're pulling their mass inward, they're lowering this uh, other physical property called their moment of inertia. It's going downward. And that's connected to their rotation rate by this uh, property angular momentum having to, to be conserved. And so because they're pulling their mass inward, their rotation rate speeds up and they start spinning faster and faster and faster the closer they get that mass together. So this just happens naturally. Mm -hmm. as they're pulling their mass in, but they're not kicking off of it. Every high school physics text has a picture of Dorothy Hamill in her, her beginning, her, you know, her, her open, you know, her, her scratch spin position, uh -huh. talking about, you know, the, in the chapter under angular momentum, yeah. you know, that's Dorothy, you know, they'll have a picture of a figure skater.